If you're new to real estate investing, I don't want you to make the same mistakes that I did, nor do I want you to make the general mistakes that I see a lot of new real estate investors making. And if you're new to this channel, my name is Justin Yurong and I've coached hundreds of students to make money in real estate. So the first mistake that I see people doing is just not doing enough research. And this goes for a variety of things. This is just not enough research into what market they want to invest in, enough research into what marketing strategy they're trying to utilize and why, enough research into their exit strategy, like are they planning to flip or wholesale, and, and going into all of that stuff. See, when I was starting out, I just kind of jumped into it. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that's really how you learn the most. However, I wish I did a little bit more research up front into what all these different strategies did entail. Like when I started to flip houses, I didn't realize how much work it really was and how much effort and time it took out of your day. I didn't realize how active of an income it was. And I realized over time that I like the long-term side. I like the rental. So up front, just do the research about what market you are trying to attack. And that'll be a variety of reasons for choosing your own market. It might be, should I do in my own backyard? But what if my backyard is expensive? What if I live in the Bay Area like San Francisco? It's choosing between those, but in, in my opinion, the best markets out there to choose from are the markets with populations over, honestly, 500,000 people in that city. Just my opinion, and you have to also look at what kind of market you're in at the time. So I'm not gonna go super in depth in that. The, also, the other thing about research is, like I said, marketing strategy. How are you gonna find your deals? Are you gonna find them for free? Or are you gonna pay to find them? And there's different ways you can do MLS for free. You can find deals cold calling, which there is some aspect of paid, but it's most mostly free or very cheap. You can attack wholesalers and find deals from other wholesalers for free. And that's pretty much just relationships. You can door knock, which is a lot of it's free, but you are paying for gas, uh, just driving around neighborhoods. You can text homeowners, which there might be an aspect of paid. So like find out what strategy you're trying to do for finding your deal. And then your exit strategy, like what are you gonna do? Are you gonna flip, wholesale, rentals, whatever? Just have an idea of what you're trying to do and why. And this really depends on your resources and your skill set. Like if you do have the money ready to go and you're willing to put in that investment, I see nothing wrong with paying for, you know, the cold calling strategy. If you're paying for the data to get all these list of properties that you want, pay for the skip tracing to get all these owners' phone numbers for the list that you pull. So that's the first thing, is just not doing enough research. The second mistake I see newbies make, and myself when I was starting out, dramatically underestimating the expenses on all of these real estate deals. See, when I was first getting started and I found a triplex that I wanted to buy, I made an offer and it got accepted right away, which I was pumped at the time, but then I started thinking, why did it get accepted so fast when all my other offers were, like all of them were rejected? I was like, why did this one on the first try get accepted? I was kind of weirded out. And I walked the property and I, in my head, because I was new, I didn't really know what I didn't know, I looked at the property and I was like, oh, this, you know, this might take about $20,000 to fix up to the condition that I wanted. And during the escrow, because I didn't really know, I was like, maybe I should get a general contractor to come out and just check it out and give me a second opinion or a real opinion, a real professional opinion. And when he came out, he told me this project that I wanted to do up to my standard would take about $75,000. I was here thinking that they would take 20 and now I realize why my offer got accepted is because there was a lot more work than I thought and in terms of money and just the general timeline and all the stuff that needs to go in. So a lot of people really underestimate their expenses and I don't want you to do the same. If you're trying to figure out what to estimate for your repair costs, just talk to the local investors in your market and really figure out what they are paying for their rehabs and also how they are budgeting for the repair costs when they're making their offers, because that's gonna be the position that you are in. So you just wanna know their mindset about the people who are actually flipping or doing deals, what their rehabs are, and how they're estimating them in the first place. The third mistake that I see newbies make is not building their network enough. A lot of people, myself included, when I was starting out, I really hated going to other people for help. Like if I was struggling with something, it kind of hurt me inside, like I had an ego and I just didn't like to bother people in my head and I didn't want to ask for help. That was the biggest mistake I've ever made and I should have been networking from the beginning and talking to these other real estate investors to really guide me and help me, especially in the times when I was unsure. In fact, my very first mentor, he called me out on it. I was doing deals with him 
and it was this one time he specifically told me, dude, like, what's your problem? And I was like, what, what do you mean? <laughs> and he told me, every time I seemed to get stuck, I just kind of stopped, or at least that's what he felt in his eyes because I never came to him for help. And for me, I was, I didn't feel like I stopped at the time. I was just trying to figure it out on my own. I was Googling stuff. And really that's all I was doing. I was on the internet trying to research and trying to solve my problems. When in reality, if I knew someone who had the answers, I could just go to them and ask them, hey, what do you do in this situation? Like, here's what's happening. What would you do? And honestly, in the real estate investing world, most of the other investors out there, they're very kind. They're very willing to help, especially if you're already taking action. So if you're taking action and you have a problem that you're trying to get through or an issue you're trying to solve because of the action you're taking, other investors are gonna be so much more likely to help you out than if you just ask a general question, like, oh, how do you do this? Like when you're doing no action at all. So start taking action and then ask the questions as needed. If you need help networking, the best places in my opinion are to go in person. Go to the in-person free real estate investing meetups in your area and if you have none, just start one you're on your own. It doesn't have to be big, even if you invite a couple investors and it slowly grows, do those. If you're also just trying to network in general, Go to like the Facebook groups. So in your city, you can type Fresno real estate investing groups, Las Vegas real estate investing groups, and you can find certain groups out there with a bunch of investors and just start messaging people and making posts of, hey, I'm trying to network with people in this area, try to bring value anytime you can. But specifically for networking events, that's the thing you always have to think on. If you go to these networking events, the biggest value you can bring to most people, especially if you're new, is just connecting people to other people. So let's say you're at a networking event, you're trying to network with people, make more friends, you talk to a lender, and then later on you talk to an agent who needs a lender. If you talk to that agent later, you can say, oh, actually, I just talked to a lender, let me introduce you guys, connect them, and you're gonna now be seen as the most valuable person to that person in their eyes. That's how you successfully do networking events. So go to those, reach out to people on social media, reach out to your, your grandparents or your friend's moms, your friend's dad, your friend's grandparents, anyone who you know that's in real estate investing, just ask and reach out and people are gonna be willing to help. The fourth thing that I see newbies, fourth mistake that I see newbies making is just not buying their deals deep enough. And I was gonna say this in a different way as far as not having secondary exit strategies, but I think the biggest thing behind that is just you're not buying the deals deep enough at these discounts. So most people, let's say if the market value of a home is at 200,000, they're buying at 195,000, which technically it, there's nothing wrong with that in the general sense. If your goal is to buy it, rent it out right away, either on Airbnb or just a long-term rental. Like if it makes sense for your numbers and your standards, you're fine. But what if you ended up needing the money? What if you ended up needing to sell the house to get your cash back because maybe you wanted to have the money to launch a different business or do flipping or something and you just you wanted more cash to yourself? Well, if not enough time has passed and your home that you bought at that barely any discount has not appreciated enough to cover all the closing costs and realtor expenses when you try to sell it, you're gonna lose money on that thing. So in my opinion, I think where most people go wrong is they're not getting those big discounts. And it is completely possible to get houses at 50% of their value, 60% of their value. It just takes work. And it takes discomfort of being able to offer that low and negotiate that low and follow up enough times to make sure that those sellers or the realtors know that you're a serious buyer and that you're ready to go. So those are the four mistakes that I see a lot of newbies making. Some of the mistakes that I know I definitely have made at the very beginning. And if you enjoyed this video, I'm gonna offer you a free strategy session. All you gotta do, click the link in the bio and you should be good to go. Or the link in the description below and you'll be good to go. Peace.